something that is very unique to the Christian faith that goes against the grain both in the ancient world and even today is the concept of why do we suffer? Why do we suffer? Why do things have to be hard? Why do we have to have difficulties? Why don't things go the way we expect them to go? And what is the value and the purpose of it? Or does it have any value? What's the point? This morning, or today I should say, uh, we commemorate the conception of the forerunner, St. John the Baptist. And back at that time, of course, for a woman to be barren meant that God was displeased with her. It was like a curse. And so that is the way that the, that the world kind of looked at these things. If something had gone wrong, then you must have done something to bring it on. You, there must be some reason for this. And, and you can understand why, you can understand why uh, people, would, people would come to this conclusion. Because there was very much this notion, especially in the ancient world, that you do something that the gods are not happy with, and then they come down with wrath, and you get punished. You really didn't want to be a follower of the Greek gods because you really didn't fare very well with them. And this notion, of course, was very much embedded in the culture. If, for example, if we go into battle and we lose, that must mean that the, the gods had abandoned us and we had done something wrong. If a tragedy struck, that must mean that we have failed to do something that we should have done. So on and so forth. And you can see the pattern, you understand how people interpreted these things. People inherently need to be able to interpret and make sense of the things that don't make sense. Because sometimes it's the only way that we can cope. When a parent loses a child, for example, it's very hard to make sense of that. And no one knew that better, of course, than the mother of God herself. And in all of that, Christianity comes along. And the message from Christianity is very, very different. And that is that our troubles, our tribulations, our trials have a value. What's interesting about this morning's epistle reading, if we were paying attention, um, where St. Paul says, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. And St. Paul is saying we are taken to the very brink, to the very edge, where we feel like we can't take any more, and yet we are preserved. And St. Paul is trying to make a very strong point. He's not trying to boast about how much tribulation and trouble he's able to endure. That's not what he's trying to say. He's not trying to show off and say, look how good I am. I'm suffering all of this, but look, you know, I dug deep and I found the strength to get through it. This is not a, a self-help book on how to get through your trials. This was a, a much deeper message. What does St. Paul say? He says, 
the reason we are able to be taken to the very brink and not destroyed, not perplexed, not distressed, and ultimately that we can endure, is because of God's strength and His grace that works through us. And that's the message that St. Paul is trying to give to the Corinthians. He's trying to say, regardless of what difficulties come upon us, Regardless of the trials and the, and the tribulations and the things we can't make sense of, we have to understand that in the Christian sense, these things are there in order to help us to see the glory and the grace of God. Many years ago, there was a man in Egypt who was uh, jailed because of his Christian faith. And he was put into a prison where it was basically only solitary confinement with little to no, no sunlight. Now, people had gone into this prison and there was a trend that, came, that, that occurred with the prisoners of this prison. That after spending a significant amount of time in, in solitary confinement, they would come out and they would, have, they would be suffering severe dementia. And they simply, their minds were broken. This man went in. He spent three years in those conditions. And yet, when he came out, his mind was perfectly sound. And when he was, when he talked about his time, when he talked about his time, he said, the thing that kept me going, the thing that enabled me, to continue, is that he had memorized the hours, the, the hours of prayer, and the Psalms. And he said, I knew what day and time they led me into the cell. And because I knew what time they, I entered the cell, I knew what the hour was. And I kept the hours going through all that time, as well as praying the Psalms. And he came out and he was not broken. And this is a, an example. This is a, a, a demonstration of how the grace of God and the strength of God works through our tribulations and our difficulties. Often when we ask the question, why? The answer is that the grace of God and the strength of God may be demonstrated through our suffering. However, often what happens is, is that we are, if we're honest, we're not patient enough. We want God to come and fix things right now. God, I've done this, for, I've done this long enough. You have, to, you have to fix this right now. And unfortunately, we then lose the benefit of seeing the glory of God working through our circumstances and through our difficulties. That doesn't mean, brothers and sisters, that it's easy. And I'm not standing here saying that suffering is an easy thing and difficulties are an easy thing. They're not. But what St. Paul is saying is, no matter how far it goes, if we stay close to God, if we stay faithful to God, if we stay focused on God like that man in, in the cell, then we will see God's glory and He will carry us through it. And, and again, unlike the, the, the idea that I've just got to get through this, you know, I just have to dig deeper, St. Paul is saying no. It is God who brings us through these things. And this is, you have to remember, St. Paul is writing this in the first century and the church is going to go through much, much harder times than when this was written. We only have to look at this, all of the, 
the martyrs that have come before us. It's very interesting. Some of the stories of the martyrs say that they were persecuted. When they endured that, the persecutors persecutors increased the persecution. But the, the saint, the martyr, it was as if they weren't even in their own body during these during these afflictions. How do we make sense of that? We can only make sense of it in light of the strength of, and grace of God working through those situations. And St. Paul says, we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe and therefore I have I spoken, we also believe and therefore we speak. And this is St. Paul trying to commend us to faith. That we have, we have two options, brothers and sisters. When we're faced with a difficulty, we can either grow closer to God and hold on, or we can give up. And can I tell you, not everybody makes the right choice. Some people leave the faith because they say, God couldn't possibly allow this to happen, and like this. And they lose faith. Sometimes, by the way, that's very hard, especially when you're looking at a situation that seems so inherently evil. I was, I heard a statistic, and I might not get the, the figure completely right, but, um, but the, the massive influx of immigration into the US over the border, uh, one of the things they mentioned was there's something like 30,000 children that are missing. And unfortunately, we know very well that there are people out there who are willing to sell children for the most despicable and disgusting purposes. How can we stand by and say, God, how can you stand by and let that happen? How? And yet St. Paul says, it's not our job to ask the right question. It's to stand fast in faith, knowing that God will work his purposes through all things. And so this is a very important lesson for us, regardless of what stage of life we're at, regardless of whether we are young or old, whether we're married, we're not married, whatever the circumstances are, everybody will come across a difficult situation in their life at some point, maybe several times, many, maybe for most of their life. There are some people who suffer for most of their life. And some people go through very difficult uh, uh, times, regardless of our circumstances. We have to ask ourselves the question, what is my response going to be? And St. Paul gives us a consolation that even when we are taken to the very brink, the Lord never abandons us, not even for a moment. No matter how hard it gets, for some people, it is very hard. But know that the Lord is loving and kind and merciful. And through His strength and grace, we are able to see the great purpose that He has for us. 